It's a, a very great pleasure to welcome you to the opening of Imperial's Reach Out Laboratory, which has the basic aim to excite young people about science. And a very warm welcome to Lord Mandelson, who's going to perform the official opening. Indeed, it's a, a warm welcome back for Lord Mandelson. I think he's been here many times and um, was first here in an official capacity way back in 1998 when he became Secretary of State at the DTI and came here to meet the scientific press. So a very warm welcome to you again. The principal reason Imperial is launching a reach out laboratory is its belief in the importance of bringing and engaging young people in science. And we believe this is not only important to this university and its future, we believe it's important to the nation's future. And those that you have you've had the opportunity uh, to go into the lab, and particularly those that have seen these rather cool experiments that um, Lord Mandelson has been performing to the great uh, enthusiasm of the kids over there, the basic aim is to not only add to and reinforce the experience that young people have at school, but to develop that and engage them in a way and with materials and experiments that are difficult for schools to have or cram into their timetables, and particularly to have the experience of teachers and students from Imperial. Well, thank you very much indeed for welcoming me back uh, to Imperial. I love it here. Uh, you basically stand and do all for and do all the things that I sort of love and care about and want to see more of and more successfully uh, throughout our country and our higher education sector and economy. Um, I mean, only the other day I was, not the other day, the other week, other month, I can't remember now. Tra time travels so quickly these days uh, when you're enjoying yourself. Um, uh, in, in, uh, in Bangalore, and I encountered Imperial uh, there. I encounter Imperial uh, in so many different guises and forms wherever I go, and I, I always feel encouraged, uh, emboldened, uh, and more optimistic uh, whenever I see a manifestation of Imperial, and it's happened uh, uh, again uh, today uh, over, the, over at the lab. Um, it's just wonderful to just to see uh, those young people, my friends, the surgeon. You're going to be a surgeon, aren't you? No, 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 you're not. Are you going to be a surgeon? That's sort of wonderful. Um, actually, there was somebody else. Who, who was the person I said, what, what were they going to be when they grew up? And I, that's right. And there was another, and I said, you, did you want to be a politician when you grew up? <laughs> and for some reason, you just roared with laughter. I, just, <laughs> I could understand it. But... Um, <laughs> But the, today, um, and I shall get round to saying what, I, what I've got to say in a moment, but um, uh, today I had a, a, a great time. We went, uh, I went off to the Queen Elizabeth uh, Centre uh, to launch the new UK Space Agency uh, and to announce uh, the government's uh, investment in the International uh, Space Innovation Centre at Harwell in, in Oxfordshire. Uh, and what we will do by organizing ourselves uh, in this way uh, is just go to another level. Um, I mean, launch ourselves into space, uh, obviously, where we are already, as a country, extremely well uh, uh, placed. Um, uh, but then take all that we're doing and ideas and innovation and technologies that we're using in space and then bringing them back to Earth and applying them in so many different uh, ways to uh, how we live and, and how we work uh, here. Um, and the, the, the number of things, I can just sort of see it in the, in the eyes of the 300 odd people I was talking to, just raring to go to uh, convert uh, all that we are researching and developing and the uh, new technological applications and plowing them back uh, into new services and new products uh, which we can then uh, commercialize as a country and and that really you know is at the heart of it um, we are a country uh, that uh, throughout this century more than ever is going to make its living and pay its way 
by generating, harnessing and applying knowledge. Um, and already we have uh, in the whole uh, space and satellite um, uh, uh, area, uh, wonderful companies, uh, so many w wonderful uh, 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 people um, who are applying uh, knowledge in so many uh, different ways already right up at the high value end of international supply chains and so much uh, of what they're doing. And that's where we've got to stay. <laughs> and every time those supply chains multiply or get longer or become more specialised or more sophisticated, that's where we in Britain have got to be. Uh, and that's why the government is absolutely determined uh, to maintain uh, our investment uh, in science, which we are most certainly uh, not going to reverse. It may be that we can't, um, um, in the coming type public spending period that we're going into, it may be that we can't uh, grow our spending in the same way and at the same rate uh, in science and research and higher education in the way that we've done during the last decade, uh, but we're certainly not going to put it into reverse either. Um, so it, it, it's, it's so important uh, for people uh, to realise uh, what the root of wealth, the root of our prosperity uh, is uh, in our country and in our economy. Uh, and it's, you know, it's all around us. Uh, and, it, and it's in those young people's faces and brains. And that's why I'm so pleased that the uh, outreach lab, the Reach Out lab, um, is bringing science uh, to so many young people. And Robert, thank you so much uh, for your vision and for your idealism. Uh, your idealism has always taken a very, very practical, uh, uh, been of a very practical kind. Um, and for all of you uh, who have helped uh, bring this about, and all of you who are the patrons and support it, um, you're just doing a wonderful thing uh, for us. You're doing a wonderful thing uh, for your country. Uh, you're, t you're investing early, you're thinking smartly, and we, all the rest of us in our country, uh, are going to enjoy the dividends in years and decades uh, to come. So I, I just want to say that and thank you. I I'm sorry that, that all this that I meant to say I haven't said, but there we are. Uh, never mind. Um, I'll leave it, at, I'll, you can print it somewhere. Uh, but I just felt like saying what I felt like saying. Um, um, and just keep going and just expand it and multiply it and find different ways uh, to take it forward. Because, you know, we, in, unless we get young people interested and engaged, unless we capture their imagination, you know, at the age of seven or, 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 or eight, and, and start them thinking along the lines, reading, absorbing, um, getting experience, exposing themselves to different um, uh, 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 not sources of knowledge, uh, then we will not succeed uh, in capturing uh, those pe young people's minds for the scientific exploration and dis discovery, uh, the fundamental research that we have to do in order to apply it subsequently two things one follows from the other so let's do that and do it more uh, and I just want to say how glad I am that you've invited me here today and, and to thank you and thank Imperial uh, and thank you Robert and thank you all those who have made it possible so all power to your elbow you've done a great job thank you very much indeed I that we would be cheeky enough to replace you with a robot on the screen. Yeah, people would like to do that, I think. <laughs> um, so, um, if you tell James to operate the robot and to unveil the plaque, uh, he'll do that on your behalf. Gosh. James? <laughs> operate the robot. I hereby declare the Reach Out Lab open for business. Well, where to start? There's just been so much to do today. It's, you know, you can't understand it. From the chemistry this morning until...
you know, and now what we've been doing this afternoon in the past hour, finding DNA from strawberries. I mean, you don't get a chance to do that every day, do you? And <laughs> the fact that we've come here for the day and done more than, you know, you do in a week at school. And it's just been a great experience being here in a brand new lab and being able to do things that we'll be able to do when we grow older. Nafjot, you're from Video School, Yeah. Yeah. Tell us what you've been doing. Um, um, how, how's it been different from the classroom? Yeah, there in Reach Out Lab, there is really different environment and many different resources. And I love studying that because um, I like studying with different technologies on my fingerprints. So it's really nice and really, really nice, yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't remember your name. Tina. Yeah, sorry, yes, thank you. So, um, Tina, tell me, tell me what's the most fun thing you've done today? Uh, today, um, I did about um, acids, natural and alkaline and universal indicator. Uh, today we did indicator, um, um, add um, some other things like... Um, lemon juice and other stuff and we put it in and we made colours like these colours from um, light colours to dark and uh, we did um, red carrot uh, add lemon juice as well these things and we made dark colours and if it's in the middle of the these colours is neutral and uh, the funniest thing was that we mixed everything to with each other and we saw which colours we made. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Rima, what, what, what do you think you've got out of today? You're, you're, you're from... Um you're from Sydenham School, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Good question, because we actually got eggs out of this, and we had to design and construct and test um, a parachute which would hold the egg without actually breaking it, and we had to drop it from 50 feet or so. We had to drop it from the Queen's Tower. And my one, in particular, I actually thought mine was very good, not being <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, because it, the egg didn't break. I mean, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't hit the target, as far as, you know, it doesn't break. So, yeah, it was good. And did, did your, did your eggs break? Yeah, it was actually a very good experience. I mean, it's not like every day you drop eggs from <laughs> 50 feet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so now you know. <laughs> well, I, I won't. I won't. I won't detain you. Um, I won't detain you for long. I just wanted to uh, thank the Secretary of State very much for coming. It's really good of you and for your kind words about Imperial, which we really appreciate. And really to thank uh, the Rector um, and, the, and the University so much for the enthusiasm which they showed from the very start um, in the building of this project. And a tremendous thank you to the so many uh, supporters. Many of you are here. I won't mention you by name. Um, who have actually helped fund the project. There is a plaque, I'm not quite sure where it is actually, but there will be a plaque on the wall of the lab outside for, the, for our donors. And just a, a brief uh, thanks to Sir Chris Evans and Jonathan Tyler for the party today, because you paid for the drinks and stuff, which is very nice of you. <laughs> yeah. um, I just want to say very briefly, really four things. Uh, this um, will only be a success if we demonstrate impact. And we're measuring impact in a serious research way. We want to see, in a longitudinal term, what happens to the children who come through the lab over perhaps 10 years. So we've got, we'll have videotape and other stuff to look back and how they communicate, because communication skills of their science is part of it. We're going to be evaluating the 
uh, career professional development of the teachers who come in and the impact they have on other children who can't come into the um, lab already it's showing an impact with that. What's interesting is that other children are not coming in, that the teaching methods seem to be changing a bit. And most importantly for us, of course, a key issue is what impact it has inside a university. The notion of actually having university undergraduates, particularly, and postgraduate students who suddenly think, you know, I'm coming from one of the top places in physics or chemistry and I'm going to teach and I'll be an inspiring teacher. And lastly, of course, what kind of teaching works best? What kind of practical teaching works best? I think if we got a network of universities doing this, which I think there's every chance we would, I mean, it's very nice to see Mark Hansen here from Southampton University today, for example, where they're starting something up with medicine, very similar. I think if we could get a network doing this, I think we could have a major educational impact in science in Britain. And I'm not interested in just creating scientists. I want scientific literacy. I think that's really what we should be aiming for. So thank you very much for coming. We really appreciate it. Pleasure.